Hey guys, Mike from 24 Hours Solar Power here. I want to say thank you. If it's the first time on the channel, welcome. If you're into anything that can be solar powered 24 hours a day, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the alerts button so you get alerted every time we upload a video. This channel here is where we talk about anything that can be solar powered 24 hours a day. Now today we're talking about the Victron ESS system. We're going to do a quick rundown and some basic intro of how it all works and what it's all about. Now to go find your ESS, you want to log into your color control. If you're standing in front of your color control, you're going to see all this here. I've logged in remotely through Victron NG forward slash VRM or VictronNG.com forward slash VRM, the link's below. Now, you want to go in here into your settings menu. So you come down to your device menu, go down and find settings. This is already clicked on settings. Okay, I want to go down and find ESS. Here we go. So the Victron Energy Storage System, so there's a couple of different options here. At the moment for us, we've had some bad weather, so we've had a battery set to keep them charged. And this is probably one of the most regular features you'll use for your ESS, is you keep batteries charged. Now there's a couple of different settings, optimized with battery life or optimized without battery life. I'm gonna click the optimized without battery life. This is more for lithium based batteries. Now if it's more about, if you've got a lead acid, lead acid based battery, you use that with battery life. That's the sort of setting you're gonna use. Uh, you're installed or do some research of what's going to be the best solution for you. Most of the time we use the without battery life. It's a lot easier. It's actually a full video by itself the with battery life, so we'll get into that. Um, it's quite complicated. So yeah, so go in there and check the setting of what you want. When raining events or anything like that, the weather's coming, I really like to use that ESS keep batteries charge system. So what will happen, the system will just drain from the grid straight away, charge your batteries flat out. Once your batteries are full, it'll stay charged. Also remember that once the weather event's passed, to go back in and click optimize without battery life, um, to turn your system back to the way it was, otherwise your batteries won't discharge. Now some features here I'm not gonna go into, I'm just gonna go into the sort of useful features that most people use day to day. Now this one here is watch the minimum state of charge unless grid, the grid fails. So this here is where you can change about, if you think about it like this, most battery settings, so if you brought a set of batteries, or we'll just talk lithium batteries here, so LiPo 4 batteries, and they say you can use 80%. Most of the time when we set the parameters on, on a system, that 80% that you see on your dashboard is actually 100%. So we actually set it so you're actually only using 80% of the battery. So when you're using 100% on this screen here, you're actually only using 80% of your battery capacity. Um, so say for example, the manufacturer, they might say it's a four kilowatt hour battery, but to get that four kilowatt hours out of it, you're required to go down to 46 volts and we actually set the settings to 48 volts. So you're actually only using 80% of the battery, but on your screen, it's gonna say 100%. So th remember to think about that, because if you've got this set for say 50%, um, you're actually using a lot less of your battery than you've got available. So just remember to think about that. Now, if you take it down to 0%, so if you've got a really reliable grid, and you know the grid never fails, you can put it down to 0% basically. So it's gonna use that whole 80% of capacity at 100 available to you, but just remember on your gauge, it's gonna say 100% that you've used. So you can have a play around that and just see what's the best. If you're running out of batteries at sort of that three o'clock in the morning and you've got it set for 30%, you can sort of play around with it and drop it down a little bit more. So as you get through to that sun comes up. Uh, if you live in an area with a really unreliable grid where the grid just blacks out all the time, you might be working stuff like that, you might wanna bump this up to sort of maybe 30 or 40% to keep in the batteries charged. So if the grid does fail, you've got enough power. The reality is when the grid fails, most of the time, it's been raining. So most of the time it's been raining when the grid's fail. So most of the time our batteries are flat anyway. So it's something you wanna think about. That's why I love using that key batteries charge system. So let's jump through and see a few other more features. Get out of it there. Um, now grid set point, this is another one that confuses a lot of people. So with the ESS system, the way I like to think about it is, electricity is all pressure. So what happens, the system actually holds hands with the grid. And the way it does that is by pressure. So with the Victron, I've got it set here for our system here, that we're feeding back 50 watts of energy all night long. So 50 watt hours every hour, we send back to the grid. And that's how the system holds hands with it. And it's all gonna depend, if you've got a really small battery bank, it might be better off to take 50 watts from the grid rather than give 50 watts to the grid. So it's just how the Victron sets, holds hands with the grid. So that pressure, it's either pushing or pulling just to see how much pressure is coming from the grid. Now, depending on the size of your system, if you've got a big 15 kVA inverter, that could be set up to 250 to 300 watts. 
uh, and you watch it fluctuate really fast from 250 to 300. The big inverters are so slow, um, the way they do things uh, and the way that readings, um, that the readings can be three to 400 watt from one side to another when you're really not using that energy. It's just the way the meter goes. Um, so that's the grid set point there. So it's just designed how to hold the hands with the grid. So if you do need energy, you can turn it on and get it straight away. Now the other really cool feature a lot of people use is scheduled charging. Now scheduled charging, how it basically works is when you go in and set it, we'll go in with this one here for weekends. I should go set a new one. So you can set these scheduled charges. Um, we'll go enabled. So you can have it, what these are more designed about is that it keeps your batteries charged or it'll charge your batteries at certain times of the day so that you don't take energy from the grid. So say for example on the weekends you might have really cheap electricity rates um, on the weekend. So what'll happen is you, you know, if you set this your batteries won't discharge, you'll actually buy energy from the grid from a scheduled charge, so you can actually charge the battery. Some systems like the old lead acid battery system, we used to set these that you know on Sunday afternoons every week we'd make sure the batteries get a full top up on Sunday afternoons, regardless of good weather, bad weather, whatever. We'd sort of set the scheduled charger, come on at two o'clock in the afternoon and make sure the batteries were completely full. They get that good charge with lead acid batteries. Lead acid batteries do require that, make sure they get topped up all the time. So what happens is, you, you know, you put the days you want in there, you put the start time and the duration. So say for example, you go and put it for 2 p.m. You know, we want to make sure that it keeps the batteries charged and get the good charge. We might put it in for a duration of four hours or make sure that those batteries get charged. If time, you can actually do state of charge as well. So you can put in here and go, if you're doing this for a lead acid battery to make sure they get charged, that's when you'll put it up to 95% the most you can actually go with that there. So um, you can set the limits to charge. So say for example, if you want to take advantage of off-peak energy in the middle of the night, you can go in here and say, right, at midnight, I want to charge the batteries up to 45% or 50%. So it'll actually start charging and charge at 50%. And sometimes we do this a lot when someone's living in an area that has really high peak energy rates in the morning. So we're taking energy that's, you know, say 20 cents of a night, we're going to charge the batteries up. And then only for maybe two hours in the morning, customers are using their peak energy. So we use it in that situation there that we just stop ever from buying from the grid in those first two hours when it's jumped up to 40 cents, it's really doubled the price. And then, you know, it goes back to solar now. The reason we set it at 50%, we don't want the battery to charge fully because the problem, if you charge it fully and you don't use that energy in those two hours, what will happen is when the sun comes out, your batteries actually won't charge, your system just feed back to the grid. So uh, there's something to consider and take in with that sort of there. So there's some basic features of the ESS system with the scheduled charging. There's a load of different ones you can set in there and have a play around with. Um, my favorite that you know, I always recommend our customers use is to get really good at this feature here that when the weather's come and you want to keep your batteries charged, I remember the first time for me when I had my system installed, and this is years before ESS and everything would come out, this is back in 2013. Uh, you know, there was a rain event, you know, I had, I had power for about an extra two hours before everyone else had power, uh, basically. Um, because yeah, my batteries were, you know, it'd been raining, they weren't charged properly, and when everyone, we had a blackout, it was only about two hours later that we were just like everyone else. So it's a really good feature that I love to stick in. Now this is another screen I just wanted to show you quickly of how you can see stuff. Now with your ESS settings, what you'll see is that when it's in an ESS mode, it'll actually say here, ESS one, ESS two, three or four, whatever mode that it's in, it'll actually show up on this screen here. I personally prefer this other screen, uh, looking at it this way. With this one here, the ESS mode show down the bottom. Now the other thing I just wanted to show you as well, if you do go into your, into your system, you come into here and you go into ESS, um, you click into here and you're in this place that says no ESS found. Uh, that actually means where a lot of off-grid systems, we don't use ESS in off-grid. Uh, if it says no off-grid with no ESS system found, it basically means that the ESS software has not been loaded to your inverter charger. And um, that's probably something you want to speak to your installer or get some advice on. If you want to learn how to do it yourself, you can click on the link below uh, to check out the video of how to upload the program to your Victron to get the ESS settings on your inverter charger. Thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. If you got something this video, give it a like, subscribe, and comment, and we'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.